what is going on guys it is a fine fine super fine day here in southwest pa and in today's episode what i would like to talk to you about is why the ninja 650 is such a great beginner bike and i might have made a video like this before i i really don't know i probably did but I have some new insight on why it's such a great beginner bike because I had a very awesome opportunity to uh, demo a lot of different motorcycles, eight different bikes over the course of two days at my local motorcycle dealership and these bikes were not beginner bikes and I'm going to go in depth and like the each one kind of has like a little thing of why this is such a great beginner bike because of things that happened to me while on those bigger bikes so I'm hoping that this will be a different video because um, a lot of these ideas I haven't seen discussed yet and that's not all oh, I'm making the great original content but uh i do feel like i have something to give to the ninja 650 world or whatever so without further ado let's get into it what makes the ninja 650 such a great beginner bike the first thing that i think that makes this bike such a fantastic beginner bike is honestly something that a lot of people kind of complain about or I've seen it complained about and that is the um, the play in the throttle if you can see there's some play in the throttle and uh, I know a lot of people have complained about that that's something that they said they don't like about the bike now when I did my demo day I got to ride some very incredible bikes and one of my favorite bikes that i got to ride was a bonneville bobber i believe it was um i believe it was 1200 i could have went i believe it was a 1200 cc bike now this bike had absolutely no play in the throttle and when i say it had no play in the throttle i mean it had no play in the throttle you were on it or off it and with that bike there if you gave it just a, a millimeter of a turn i mean you were starting to get pinned that bike was that bike was insane i absolutely fell in love with it and i would i want to get one but it had absolutely no play in it now why is that a good thing for the ninja 650 and for beginner riders well, I noticed that it was an issue with two situations that happened to me. The first situation is everyday riding, when you're riding along and you hit a bump, a lot of times when you hit a bump, you don't realize it, but you're blipping the throttle. And sometimes that little bit of play here will prevent you from going a little bit overboard, right? Uh, but with that bobber, when that same thing happened to me, since there's no play in it whatsoever, it shot me back. I mean, it, it let me know that I blipped the throttle. It was, uh, it wasn't like it was like unforgiving, but it, it let me know. It definitely let me know. And, uh, another thing that I noticed with, uh, with it and, um, this, uh, this might just be uh th this is kind of on me because this is just kind of bad riding and i didn't realize i was doing this until i was doing it but whenever i was braking on the bobber a lot of times what i noticed is whenever i would be braking and i would come to like the end of the brake the bike would shoot up and that was because for whatever reason when I brake I'm also giving it throttle now I didn't really notice that with the 650 because you kind of have that um you have that play in there but with that Bonneville you couldn't there was no play so whenever I was braking I uh I was like pulling in the throttle and it, it provided a, a kind of 
poopy situations. I mean, I didn't wreck or anything like that, but uh, it definitely made itself known as a as an issue. And that's that one is kind of on me. But what's nice about the 650 in that sense is it gives you room to learn and to grow. And while that is incorrect riding and it's something that I have to shape up, I would much rather learn incorrectly on the six. So even like then, when I was braking, my RPMs were up. Um, I would much rather be in that situation rather than learning on a bike like that where if, an, if a situation like that does happen, you're gonna panic. Well, you might not panic, but most people are probably gonna panic because it's it's uh, pretty abrupt and it can be. Uh, are you braking? And it can be kind of like a, a scary thing if you're not uh, if you're not anticipating it and you're not ready for it. Thanks, dude. Appreciate you. Um, and if you're if you're not ready for it. So, you know, that's definitely, that's definitely like the first thing with the Ninja 650 with, with what I, why I think it's a, a really good beginner bike is because of that play. I, I think that is kind of important. The second thing why the Ninja 650 is such a great beginner bike is you really get to practice your shifting because you can use all of the gears. Uh, which bike was it? Triumph Twin Speed and a lot of the the higher CC bikes, thousand CC bikes, uh, you're not really getting out of second and third gear. Uh, not for the riding that we were doing. This was a test ride, and if you haven't seen the videos or if the videos haven't come out yet, you'll see them soon enough. They're kind of back roads or whatever, um, but they're. Uh, there weren't there's a little bit of highway so maybe i got in a fourth maybe once but you really don't have to like get up there up there in the gears not like with the 650 so what's really nice about that is it gives you time to practice with shifting all your gears and going through the whole gears uh the whole gear series and i mean you know that's one just fun and two, it's it's nice to be able to do that. You know, I didn't really realize that was a thing until I got on these thousand cc bikes where it's like, hey, you really aren't getting out of like second and third. If you're like kind of playing in the twisties, now granted with this bike here, whenever I'm playing in the twisties, I'm usually chilling in third is like my favorite gear. I'll crack down the throttle and engine brake and, you know, do uh, your progressive braking and all that fun stuff uh, to, to do the turning and all that or cornering, whatever you want to call it. But with the, uh, with, with that bike, the, like the Triumph and even that Ducati, I rode a Ducati DeVille V4, you're not really getting out of second and third gear. Uh, again, not for where we were at. Highways and interstates and maybe bigger roads. Yeah, but this, you're not getting out of anything. Third's probably too high for what I'm at now. But you would definitely be chilling in like first, maybe second gear. Um, you're, uh, you're, not, you're not really playing too, too much. And again, that's, that's what's really nice about the Ninja 650 is because it gives you an opportunity to, hey, I'm in second gear. Hey, I'm in third gear. Hey, I'm downshifting into second gear. It just allows you to play and practice and, and just have fun because shifting is fun and that's part of it. And um, so yeah, that's that's definitely another thing is being able to play with the gears. The third thing why the Ninja 650 really is such a great beginner bike is because it is very forgiving in what gear you're in for an example whenever let's do this whenever i was um whenever i was riding the ducati the um 
see if you guys can hear me over these guys. Uh, when I was riding the Ducati uh, DeVille, or what, not DeVille, um, whoa, Lambo. The Diablo V4, that bike was extremely, uh, extremely, how do I want to word this? Picky with gear selection, like, you had to be in the right gear or it would start bogging out and that includes being in the right gear at specific uh, speeds and also RPMs because like I said I remember that's kind of why a lot of the videos that you see when I'm riding these like leader bikes or whatever um, I'm only kind of playing between first, second, and third, and a lot of it was second gear because a lot of times when I was in third gear, I was going too slow uh, or too slow of a speed for that high of a gear, especially with the Diablo. That bike there, if you're not in the right gear, it starts to shake and it starts to stall out and bog out on you. and. When that was happening, it, it happens kind of aggressively. So whenever I was in my turn, and you're in a turn, and you're kind of slowing down through the turn or whatever you're sitting, well, you shouldn't change speed while you're in the turn, but you know what I'm saying. As a beginner, you might get scared and you might try and slow down a little bit. That bike's gonna start to bog out on you. And when it does that, it's gonna start shaking around and that can easily, easily lead to a bad situation if you don't know how to quickly correct it or you just remain calm and you do what you need to do. So the 650 is such a great bike because you can essentially cruise and chill in almost any gear. Like look, six gear at 44, I shouldn't be in it. It's not technically correct but I can still get up and go it's not bogging out fifth gear perfectly fine fourth gear perfectly fine third gear now we're kind of getting a little high up I don't want to drop it in a second but you see what I'm saying you can be in almost any gear and you won't really pay for the consequences now you know somebody might say well does that set you up for bad habits? No, I don't necessarily believe it sets you up for bad habits. Uh, only because it, you're, you're just kind of in the learning process. You're, you're going to know, yeah, I shouldn't be going uh, 30 mile an hour in 6 gear. You can on the 650, but you shouldn't. So if it happens to happen on, a bigger, or on the 650, it's not that big of a deal. Whereas the Diablo, that's not going to fly. That bike is a lot more unforgiving in the sense that it's a big bike. It's a it's a very aggressive bike for the most part, engine wise. So it is letting you know, hey, this isn't going to fly. You you got to be in the right gear, the right RPM for me to run. And if not, we're not going. And it will let you know what's up. Okay, uh, what else makes the Ninja 650 such a great beginner bike? You know, I, I brushed on that very quickly, um, and uh, it's it's not really something that would like deter me from getting another kind of beginner bike. But this is what's very nice for the Ninja 650 is the seating, because with the seating you can feel something against your tailbone, like you are. Um, you are in the seat. You can feel safe and secure in the seat. Whenever I rode the uh, that Triumph uh, Speed Twin, dude, that thing was like a bench, and it had so much horsepower and torque that it would kind of swing you back. And there was nothing to protect you from keeping you from sliding backwards and all that stuff. So. You know, just the overall comfort of the 650 seat and just the body position in general is is really, really, really nice. 
Uh, and I just think it makes it more comfortable. And when you're comfortable and you feel safe and you feel like you're not going to fly off the bike, I think you're just going to be able to enjoy the bike a lot more. Because the whole idea and these ideas that I'm talking about, what they're doing is they're just, uh, it's, it's just stuff to, to kind of um, make your learning experience as comfortable as possible. Like you don't want to be thinking about flying off the seat or having no play in the throttle or worrying about what gear you're going to be in or you're going to dump it and it's going to dump you. It's really nice to just get on a bike. All those things are taken care of. Hey, you have to learn this, but we'll learn it at your own pace and everything's good. So that's kind of like the whole point of the video. Another thing real quick, because I don't want the video to be too, too long, is the display on the bike. And it's very nice because it's not overwhelming and it also gives you enough information. Like it gives you all the information that you need. Uh, which bike was it? So two, two different scenarios, the BMW, r1250 gs or however you want to pronounce it that bike had so much gizmos and gadgets on it the screen was very nice but there was a lot going on and that is nice whenever you need it but it can be a bit much if you are just trying to learn how to ride a bike uh, and it can be a distraction because then you're going to be th looking at all that stuff and not what you're supposed to be looking at which is the road and especially if it's got all the extra buttons which that one did and on the other note it tells you everything you need very clearly uh even the time so whenever i was riding uh the what was i riding i should be in a lower gear i don't want to switch in here though uh whenever i was riding the triumph 12 speed or that bmw 18r that huge 1800 cc bike it was a very simple display which is nice because some people enjoy that but it is also very nice as a beginner to see your speed very clearly to see your tachometer very clearly to have a convenience as a gas indicator because believe it or not not a not excuse me many 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 bikes have a gas indicator um i see a lot of people with like newer bikes where they have to keep resetting their trip or whatever because um it doesn't have a gas indicator which i always thought was kind of weird to not have but you know hey it is what it is uh, a lot of times these bikes are made to be simple to take people back to a simpler time so i get it but again with the 650 it's nice that everything is big bright illuminated I got my tack, I got my speed, I got my uh, fuel, just flipping through this, I can uh, go through miles per gallon range, flipping through here, trip A, B, and my regular odometer, I got my thermostat. It's, uh, it's very nice, easy, convenient to read and just to understand, and it's not overwhelming, and it's not underwhelming either. I guess the final thing that I want to talk about real quick before the video gets way too long is something that's not going to make a lot of sense but another reason why the ninja 650 is such a great beginner bike is because it just is and you might be thinking that's kind of a dumb point but whenever i was done riding all these bikes on the demo day and all that and uh i got on my bike after about five six hours of riding my bike felt like a toy and I don't mean that in any disrespect whatsoever towards the Ninja 650, but I could very well much tell after riding more advanced bikes that this is a beginner bike. It just feels like a beginner bike. It's light. Your seat is easily, uh, you're, you're very comfortable on the seat. Uh, your fleet are completely planted. The mirrors are great. Uh, the body position is great. Just everything about it is really, really nice. And that's not to say that I'm outgrowing the Ninja 650 because that is not the case whatsoever. I was just very made much aware that this is a beginner bike. Even, even the speeds and how I'm able to navigate through everything is very beginner friendly because, you know, that amount of throttle right there I would have been up to 70 mile an hour on that uh, speed twin 
in the right gear or whatever i mean that thing was an absolute monster even the um the mv augusta uh it, it had a lot of technology but that bike was very very quick as well and um you know i guess even talking about the opposite side of the spectrum i rode a triumph 400 or a speed 400 which is like their new 400 cc uh single single uh, cylinder engine and um, that bike was a lot of fun in the twisties but i could tell immediately that bike would not be what i need for my situation with how and where i ride it just wouldn't be enough for me so yeah i guess that's the last the last reason even though it's not a very good reason it just is and it's something that you just have to experience you have to ride it for a while and then ride a bunch of other bikes maybe a demo day or whatever and then you get on it and it's like oh i really i i see what's going on just even like the position of the tank how the tank hugs the top of your knees like it kind of like bows out right here and like kind of keeps your knees in place just everything about it's very nice but i'm going to get out of here because i think i made the video too long and i'm really sorry about that i hope that I hope that this was enjoyable and if I did mention at least one thing that you haven't considered would you please consider to shoot me a like and a comment and uh, all these bikes that I showed uh, I'm going to have first ride videos as well as in-depth videos about uh, just about them you know walk around the bikes at the dealership and all that stuff so if that's something that you're interested in consider subscribing because I got these videos coming out uh, hopefully soonish, but thank you guys for watching again. Don't forget to like share and subscribe and I will see you in the next one